At five, the state of emergency extends in Portland before another riot in the city. Some activists in the black community call out the mayor, saying he misused their words. Plus, you might live in an urban setting and think to yourself, oh, that only happened really, really far away. Not true. Hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. What you need to know to make sure you're covered this wildfire season. And it's Saturday, April 24th. On this day in 1990, the Space Shuttle Orbiter Discovery lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center with a crew of five and the Hubble Space Telescope. The news starts now. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler extends a state of emergency through the weekend, blaming a group of self-described anarchists. Last night, about 75 of them went to the northwest part of the city to protest recent police shootings. They were marching on Northwest 23rd, breaking windows, tagging property with graffiti, and pushing their way into a restaurant. Police then declared a riot. Officers arrested two people on criminal mischief charges. The state of emergency will remain in effect through 12 p.m. on Monday. But the mayor is now facing criticism for his remarks about dealing with downtown violence. Here's Christelle Krumway. We must stand together as a community against this ongoing criminal intimidation and violence. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler first declared a state of emergency on Tuesday following the verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial. It allows the mayor to declare a curfew, close streets and other places like parking garages. Our job is to unmask them, arrest them, and prosecute them. People know who these criminals are. On Friday, the mayor are. urged people to report to authorities any illegal looking activity. He also asked for the public to report license plates or vehicles carrying groups dressed in all black. Deputy Portland Police Chief Chris Davis joins Wheeler in the call for help. But that information could be useful later if people in the same descriptions are involved in criminal activity. Uh, it helps us piece together who was at these events. I am wearing all black. I often wear all black. I will continue to wear all black. On Saturday morning, this group gathered to criticize the mayor's comments. It includes activists, protesters, and community leaders. And so when I read your response, Tevis, what I read was you trying to pull us apart. Amber Boyston is one of the dozens of black Oregonians who drafted an open letter this week aimed at those doing the protesting. It says in part, actions that neither increase solidarity nor broadcast purpose while making the lives of local black communities more difficult or not acceptable. The group says while the letter also talks about concern with police violence, the mayor misused those words in his call to extend the state of emergency. If black people are speaking, I would appreciate it if people would listen to the words that we say and read the words that we say, absorb the words that we say, think on the words that we say, but stop adding your own lens to it. Sometimes you just have to be quiet and listen. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. A new report details the 24 hours following the guilty verdict this week in the Derek Chauvin trial. Chauvin was convicted on three counts for the death of George Floyd. According to the Associated Press, at least six people were killed by police officers in the U.S. in the day following the verdict. For some, the shootings reflect a need for changes to policing. For others, the shootings are a reminder of a difficult decision that officers face. New tonight, police say one person is dead after being hit by a max train. It happened near North Interstate and North, L North Larrabee. Officers were called to the area around 1.30 this morning. That's when they found the person who had already died. Investigators are still working to determine just what happened here. Well, the weather is cool and damp this week, but we are coming off a week of record warm temperatures and some wildfires. Caitlin Etlin gets some advice on how to be ready for an early season. In mid-April, less than a year since September's historic Oregon wildfires, people in Clackamas County had to evacuate again, including Joyce Walker. And I've had enough experience with fires that we just got in our car. And if last year is a lesson with toxic smoke. Hospitalizations went up 10% for people that were experiencing respiratory issues. And with flames in metro area neighborhoods. You might live in an urban setting and think to yourself, oh, that only happens really, really far away. 
Not true. Derek Wing with Pemco Insurance in the Pacific Northwest says the best plan prevent that problem from happening is to take action now. What do people need to know and be preparing for? Well, the good news is that wildfires are protected by most people's home insurance. So as fire season begins, you can reduce your risk by clearing brush and debris around your home. Keep trees trimmed back and away from each other to prevent flames from spreading and move firewood away from your home. Next, have a plan for evacuation and essentials like food, clothes, water, and medicine packed in a go bag. Know where it is and easily accessible so when they do have to evacuate, they can get it put it in their car and evacuate quickly. As climate change makes wildfires more frequent and more serious, some insurance companies are rethinking coverage in riskier areas. Double check and make sure, call your insurance agent, make sure that you're covered, make sure that you're good to go. And as NBC News correspondent Steve Patterson says, we all have a part to play. Focus has to be on what happens at a macro state level. So the best answer I could tell you is to maybe write a letter to your congressman saying that we need to do something to combat climate change and do something to clear all this vegetation out so these wildfires have less room to grow and less fuel to burn. Because as the risk grows, the more our neighbors hurt. To be displaced is probably one of the worst things that can happen. If your home burns, the rebuilding process is tricky during COVID, with lumber prices sky high and contractors booked out for months. Luckily, that wasn't the case for Joyce Walker, now home safe and even more prepared for next time. It's just always better to be safe than sorry. Galen Etlin, KGW News. President Biden makes a historic declaration today saying the slaughter of Armenians by Ottoman Turks more than 100 years ago is genocide. The announcement is a first by a sitting American president and goes against the government of Turkey. Estimates suggest around one and a half million Armenians were killed or deported in modern day Turkey in 1915. The country says Biden opened a deep wound undermining mutual trust. The Armenian National Committee of America says it ends a century-long era of American complacency in Turkey's denials. Experts say the declaration will test an already chilled relationship between the two countries. The Indonesian Navy submarine missing since Wednesday has not been located. All 53 crew members on board are believed to be dead. Officials with the country's military say they found debris off the coast of Bali. It's part of the guidance system for a torpedo, and they believe it is from the sub. They also found prayer rugs, possibly from those on board. Officials say the submarine could have imploded or crashed, but as of now, they aren't entirely sure what happened.